So this is a sort of kind of maybe not that quick, but an overview of the full process that I go through when I'm making images on Canva. Again, <clears throat> Canva is a free service. It's all free. And if you, I don't know, um, keep getting uh, pay block ups, then probably that could be an issue. But as you can see, I use this all the time. I'm signed in. My Canva is signed in through Facebook. That might be my account settings. I don't pay nothing. I'm going to go back to this main screen. So when you sign in online, you should not have to pay for anything. Um, even NABJ widely uses Canva, and they never pay for it. They even give people the login information, and it's a free account that everybody uses to make images. Um, so you should never have to pay for this. The only time you pay for anything on Canva is when it has um, like these crown, these crown symbols, and I'll show you that. So this is my process. The first thing you want to do is you need to know what are you going to be creating right so the first thing that you are going to be creating hold on you need to know what think about what social media site um, are you going to be posting it on right so first I'm like okay what site am I want to scoot it, sit it on and you want to make sure it's the right size right that's why it's not always smart to create an image where it's only, uh, the video is only a good video size for Instagram. But then you got the black spaces when you post it on Facebook, or it's not the right video size for Twitter. Now, most videos that you make that um, are just square video, which is usually a um, 400 by 400, or let's look on here, Instagram. So usually these numbers right here will show you how profile picture a square image which is 1080 by 1080 so when you make a square image for Instagram usually that image can work for Twitter and work for Facebook although usually Facebook has different dimensions for their photos those kind of are synonymous can work the same way but of course we already know when you do those IG stories and you do it the vertical way um, they might not always come the same if you post them on Facebook. But we're going to just stick to images right now. And so we're going to make an image that is going to be for Instagram. But you can also use square, perfect square images for Twitter. And those same square images can be used for Facebook. So that's why I think it's always good to use a nice square image because you can post those on all three main social media sites, even LinkedIn. Again, I am going to um, not only email you the link to this video when I'm done, but I'm also going to email you some of these links of the resources that I usually use when I'm doing images. You, I don't just go on Canva and be like, bam, let me find a good image. Boop, boop, boop. I use picture sites. I use color sites. I use font sites, you know, because you want to portray your message. Font say something on your message, too, um, especially when it comes to... Um, if you have a certain business or maybe you're selling cupcakes or maybe you're selling, um, you know, T-shirts, you want your fonts to be consistent all across the board. You can't keep switching up your fonts. Think about if Pepsi switched up their fonts every time we've seen a Pepsi bottle. At the end of the day, we're like, okay, if they do switch up their fonts, we know that maybe it's a Halloween edition or maybe it's a Christmas edition. But in general, even if you took... Um, the font and you've seen that font written in something else you didn't know that, oh that's Pepsi's font oh that's a Coca-Cola font because you're like oh you know that Coca-Cola uses the same cursive font across all of their products so when it comes to posting stuff online you want to make sure you always use the same font even if you got to write it down somewhere the name of that font you always use that font on all your materials even if it's one or two fonts always use those one or two fonts because you want to make sure that your your brand looking consistent all the way through and so that's when I go do a little bit of topography again I'm just doing this for you of course um, I know this stuff but I think it's important for you to know this stuff when it comes to creating the actual image I know you really only care about how it looks nice and the color and all that but 
the wording that you put on images, the, the coloring, all that stuff needs to look right and it needs to be consistent. Um, so just like for example, um, well let me go over the topography first. It's important to know a little bit of topography when you are, you know, creating images for online. You want stuff to be readable and you want stuff to look right um, for your clients or for your people, for your customers. Um, if stuff is too much or look too jumbled, nobody's going to read it. They're not going to care. And even though you might think like, oh, you know, they the customers, no, they really are. People are looking at things that they see online as whether it looks professional or whether it looks like somebody just threw some stuff together. So you also want to make sure you put a little bit of your information up on topography uh, so you can understand the different elements of fonts and when it's a good time to use certain fonts and not a good time to use certain fonts. So for um, example, I'm going to just use your stuff as an example. Um, for example, this is the image that we're going to recreate today. These two colors are not the same. Even though you uh, have an array of colors that's similar to this color scheme, there is a program that you can use where you can know this exact color code. You want to write that color code down, and you every time you create an image, you can make it the same color. Now, this font. The font is, is okay font, but you can look at fonts. You can literally Google. I do this all the time. Fonts that say business, fonts that look professional. Uh, because this is cute, and usually when we create stuff, we're like, oh, I like it because it looks cute. But you want stuff, the fonts that actually portray professional. Um, and then also you want those fonts to be clear. Again, if you look into this, the, it's, it's kind of like pixelated. It's not really um, completely clear. But this is clear. Not clear, this is clear. Um, just for an example. And then when it comes to um, kerning, kerning is how close your words are to each other because people aren't going to be able to read something, read certain things if you're posting it and the words are too close together. Like this, for example, if I see something like this, I'm like, I'm not reading that. The words are too close together. So when I talk about kerning, again, example, kerning is just that, that space between the words that makes something more believable so imagine if you had these words and they was in cursive right in in the cursive font nobody would be able to read that at all and they were they would just overlook it and just look at your image and keep and keep going so um those are just examples that i'm just saying behind the scenes so you can understand that when you when it comes to create images every single thing matters down to the font what type of font and even the colors and the size like every single thing goes into how important it is um to to you know make your images look these are some free picture sites of course i've seen that you use this picture site before so what we're going to do is i'm going to find i just had one one of your images this image is right here this is the image that we're going to recreate today and i'm going to show you how I'm, i i will re recreate it just off pump just because I just want to show you how it would rec re recreate this image. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I know that I want this image to be for Instagram. Now when you go on Canva, you can just easily go to Instagram posts. They have them all right here. Oh, you want to create an Instagram post, Facebook posts, logos, flyers, like all this stuff is here. So again, the reason why you haven't been seeing these images is probably because you have been only using your app. And you can see all this stuff um, online. You can see right here are some of the recent designs I made using some of the stuff they already had or just being inspired by some of the stuff that they had. You can see I didn't went through it all. Because you could pick their images but then create your own image by uploading your own colors or whatever. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and create an Instagram post. I'm going to look through here, kind of re recreate something um, for this image right here. So, emails are out. Let us know if you are a business owner. If you or a business owner, you know, may need human resource services. Okay. So, 
let's have it focus on the image and not so much of uh, the wording. Um, and of course, we know you want to keep the logo, but sometimes you don't always need to keep the logo. Just like on some of your posts, you only wrote business service solutions only, or just like in cursive, or if you ever wanted to um, go up on the images or you know update all your logos, then you can always do that too. So I'm just going to recreate this just, I don't know, randomly off the top of my head in my own way. So I'm looking at all these are all the images you see on Canva like all of them, all different images. And so when you say, how do you find those images? It's because I always use my computer. I use my computer, create the image, and then I download it and I send it to myself. So this is my process and I'm just have you watch my process. Um, let's see. Thinking business, business. Um, I'm thinking emails. We want to let people know we got human resource services. See all these images? I'm still going down. Um, let's see. And this is actually a, a moving image, so let's see. Um, Again, this may not be perfect because then that, this video will be a whole hour because I actually take a lot of time to think about certain images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this simple and straight to the point and just recreate an image. Basically, this image is going to be I'm letting people know that they need to check their email or they need to let people know that I got some human resource services. And you see, I'm still going. So many images. This is why you should always use the online version of anything that you've only been using the app version for um, all this time. So definitely you want to transfer over to a Canva image. Okay, so I think I'm going to use... Mm -mm. Let's see. Business, business, business. that before. Go get the coffee. See how these images are so many. So many. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to just use this one. Just use this one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is when I click on here, all these options up here come on top. And we already know if you click on this color thing, it tells you what this person's background color is. So I see what their little background color is or whatever. But I want, let's see. Uh, maybe I want to just use this image just because, and I don't even want to use the background at all. First thing I want to do is I need to find out what is the color code for your image. So I already pre-googled this, but this site is called imagecolorpicker.com. So you go to imagecolorpicker.com, you upload your image right here. And when you upload your image, it's going to tell you the color code of everything. <laughs> so this is your color for your business. And these this is the color code that you want to write down and you know even if you have somebody else make your image or redo your logo in the future um, of course you want to make sure they give you a PNG logo so that you can put it over stuff and it has a clear background but you will forever know that this is your color code this is the code and the color for your business is a real unique color code to your business you know this is how you can tell whether or not it really really if somebody else tried to copy off your business and try to use the same color because they want your business or they want your color, they want people to think that they're you. If they don't have this exact same color code, you may not believe it, but people can tell when the colors are similar but not exact. So this is forever your color code. 
And again, this site can always help you make fine little color codes so that you can stick with those. So then you go over here, bam, there go your color code right there. Now we know that's your color. Just change the whole thing to that color. That's your business service solutions color. We don't want this image. But I want something that says emails are out. So let me delete all these other elements. Maybe I want to keep that. Maybe I don't want this font. So, and I always kind of put the arrow on that edge, and then you could just delete the whole font. You don't have to select it. Just put it right there on the edge and hit delete. So I got this image. So let's go over here to elements. Look for different elements, frames. So I'm going to use for today, because we're talking about emails, and where do people get emails? On their phones and on their computers. So let's delete this image and we're gonna put this computer here. And remember these, see them purple lines that's showing up? It's telling you that basically that's how you can stay within the frame or stay within the borders. Um, and then that line in the middle is basically telling me that's my center, right? So of course I'm, I'm gonna like try to stay a little bit over and not too much in the frame. So that's gonna be my image for emails. Go to pixels. Um, let's see. See that this says emails are out. Let us know if you're a business owner. No, man, need our human resources. Okay. So I kind of like this image, but what I do is I just download a lot of images because you don't never know how you feel it. Maybe you want to change it. So maybe you want to know somebody who needs human resource, whatever. So people, this looks like teamwork. Maybe you know somebody else. This is literally the process I go through. I'm thinking to myself and I'm talking about all the things that can relate to the image I'm trying to create. Um, so let me go up here and I'll put in human resource. And then maybe pixels will have images um, that relate to human resource, business. So like a teamwork. Um, let's look into emails. Email. Because this would even be a good image too. But it's so hard to find black hands. Let's see, I'll be wanting to I'll be wanting to have black hands. It's hard to find black people doing stuff. See, this would be good if she wasn't looking directly in the camera. And again, even when it comes to picking your images or making your own images, you always want to make sure your images have the maximum pixels, their HD images. Because one thing a lot of people don't know is when you post it, when you have using the same picture over and over and over again, because pictures that can be uploaded to social media are um, JPEG pictures. Every time you open up a picture, every time somebody scroll past that picture, every time somebody looks at it, or every time you download a picture and then upload it and download it again, upload it, those images are removing your quality from those photos are always getting removed. So even if, like, for example, if I download a picture today and I want to use it again, I might use it one other time, but I'm not going to keep on using it and keep on using it and keep on using it because... I know for a fact that nine times out of ten, um, the quality from those pictures are going to be gone. Let's see, mail, laptop, computer. Let's see, email.
Yine ne söyleyeceğim artık? Just because I don't know, in my mind I'm visualizing like an email symbol. Maybe I'll download this just because. Sometimes you got to download multiple images if you want to get like that inspiration. And that's usually what I do. Never use graphic images like this, because that's everybody. That little man is just known to be the generic email symbol. It's just known to be even stuff like this. This image itself could have been uploaded, and then you could type stuff there in like a marker felt font. You know, any any of that stuff like that would be sweet. Um, let's see. I don't want to take up too much of your time. But this is the process that I go through, looking for different images to put into my image and different elements to put on top of my image. So it's not as much as, it's not so much as to what Canva has, is looking at what they do have and putting that stuff together um, to create and make or, or make your own image. So I'm just download that just because. So let's go back to Canva. Go uploads, upload a few images that are just downloaded. I'll just upload all this stuff. So let's see how this look on here. So bam, that's fine. And again, when I go to the elements, these type of elements, when you put these on your images, you can put anything inside of that, and it could be the shape of it. So, for example, if I just wanted this paint thing, right, I go back to my uploads, and maybe I could put them ladies in there. And then I click on it. If you want to adjust it or crop it, you can always kind of crop it, make maybe expand it a little bit. I want both ladies to be in there like that. So, again, I'll just use that as an example. And this way I could move this image anywhere I want. So I put this here, or maybe I put this, because then it starts showing up lines in relation to that image. Right, right. So I know that that's the center of that image right here. All right. So I still kind of like this crown thing. But I might not use it. But I'm going to just show you a whole bunch of examples of different elements you can use. So I'm thinking, let's see. They got charts. They got all different types of lines and arrows. Again, everything is free unless it's say pay for. Then it ain't free. We're gonna use some um, lines. Maybe I want to use some um, arrows or something. Maybe I want to use this, but I want to make it. You see, it's blue and it's highlighted. The square says that it's highlighted. This shows me the color. I'm gonna reshape the color because your color code is black. This lets me allows me to rotate it, and that allows me to make it bigger. Right, so let's make it back smaller. This corner. Like that. And I can rotate it back. So maybe I want to use these lines as like, yeah, check your email, fool. 
with the email coming out or whatever the case may be and then this image I could probably bring it down a little bit more but not too much but we send em emails here and we saying um, like this is like I don't know expressive I just found them but again you can use any of this stuff over here but these lines I'm just using them because it's kind of like it look like excitement it looks like the movement an email will probably make through the internet. I don't know. However you want to logic it, you could put all these different elements you see over here. You can always put them over here and change the color of it. Like, just because this is gold, you're not stuck with gold. You can make whatever you want. So, the wording is, emails out, let us know uh, if you are business owner, whatever, whatever. Okay. So, I would just go to my fonts. You got your different fonts here. And again, even though these are the fonts, once you select on one, you don't have to stick with it. So I'll say, again, you want to always make sure you get straight to the point when you put words on here because you don't ever want to create images with cluttered words. You don't want to put too much reading on it because nobody's going to read it. If you ever notice, sometimes you put so much words on stuff and you're going to get a whole bunch of comments under it of people asking you, do you do this? Do you do this? That's because they didn't read. Nothing you wrote on there. Um, that's how you get people, just tell people to inbox you, and then you can bug them in the inbox later. Uh, but you want to keep few words as possible on graphics and on pictures or whatever the case may be. So I'm just going to use, because I don't know what font this you use, but it looks like a, a cursive font for your business logo and then this looks just like whatever so what I usually would do I'm gonna go and see I'll do um, professional fonts this is just what I do professional 15 professional fonts bam I see what they say is professional fonts they talking about paying I ain't talking about paying nothing so let's see So, good. choose the right fonts. Learn Canva. Bam. Copper with bold. That looks professional, but I don't want it to be too league spartan. So, let's try a little league spartan. So I can't search by the name. I gotta like look for it. But again, these are all just personal things. You have to. It has to be your own vision. Um, what you think looks good, looks readable, or whatever the case may be. That's what you always want to think about when you go to choosing a, a font. What's look good? What's look readable? See how this has a lot of the kerning in between it. So you know that's gonna be super readable. But again. Sometimes even the words being too far apart could be, um, you know, non-professional non looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go up here and I'm going to do, I want a, I want a heading, right? So I'm going to go here because then you can come here and choose any type of type that you want. I usually like this one. Let's see how this looks. Bam. So I'm going to say... Emails are out. Let us know if you are a business loan. We already know. Let's see. Let us know if you ever know. You just go straight to the point. If you're a business service, if you're a business owner, contact us now. That's what we're gonna say.
So, straight to the point. If you're a business owner in need of HR services, contact us now. So, I typed out what I want. So, let's see. I always click out of it and then back on it, and that way I can move it. Maybe this font is a little too big. Again, this all this does so much with like messing around with stuff and playing around with stuff. So I'm just showing you how what my process would be. Click out of it, click back on it to move it. See how that made me sure it was exactly in the middle and exactly in the center of that. So I'm gonna keep that there while making this a little bit smaller. Bam. And then I said, um, emails are out. Cool, straight to the point. Let's make that part um, look a little bit like, let's see. Uh, emails are out. So we know this is the professional part. And then I do uh, this. Send on this pay script. Emails are out. As you see, I like that font, but it just don't look readable. So, this emails are out. This, yeah, you gotta see what feels good to you. And we want to say emails are out. Like we're trying to. I don't know, portray a message like, check your emails, but also we want you to know that we are serious. So I wouldn't really pick a bold. Let's see. All right, maybe I'll do this one. Email the Here and then this shows this excitement. Hmm. And if I wanted to, I could click on it and duplicate that and then rotate this even more. Or I could just delete this element altogether, go back to this one. Maybe I want this circle, right? I make this circle, go from gold to black, and move this right over it. Make this a little bit smaller, because either way people are going to read it. It says emails are out. Bam, emails are out. So I have a lot of words on here without having too many words on here. Um, and then I got, if you are a business owner and need of HR services, contact us now. And if you want, you can actually make, so this is Joseph, and then maybe you can make this the same. So, J-O. Here we go. So now you got it the same. So now I want to go ahead and put your email at the bottom. Because maybe... Again, sometimes people might not take the time to learn this stuff. I mean, or read this stuff. But if somebody reshares the logo, I mean, reshares this image with their friend, then we know that we can put the image right here on the bottom. Again, we are using Joseph Josephine Sands. We will paste that there. Um, we're gonna definitely make this half the size of the font. Let's see, let's make it 40. Right, stretch it out the long way. Click out, click back on, and then you can move it. So 
So I'm going to just put this right here at the bottom. That's it. And then I just download my image right here and it's free. But again, every time you come back to Canva, this image is always going to be here. So you could take off all these images and literally just delete everything. Maybe I'm going to take the same uh, color background. Um, and I want to keep that at the bottom just because. And let's say today I'm feeling uh, like, uh, let's see. I'm going to just make something random. It's just random off the top of my head. Go to elements. Um, let's see if I could try to look and copy something else off your page. Oh, when you do the Friday, um, uh, what is it? A uh, resume tip or oh, new year, new career. Like that was a good image. Working, working, Sunday work, take it. Okay, like this one. The image is very grainy. So let's go to this resume. And you don't want vector images, you want all images. You gotta pick those. Try to finish this because this is almost 40 minutes long. Um like this. Resume. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna do find some elements. Cause I always love using these type of elements. So we can go to. elements yeah. um, um, put this here and this somebody in an interview or maybe you need help with your resumes this look like somebody helping on a resume bam so we put that image in there and then let it go Right, but you can always even make this image transparent as much as you like. Um, or you can also click on the image and adjust the brightness of it. Make it brighter, the contrast, images, the saturation, tint to the image. Here we want to blur, process vignette. Um, I want to keep it a little bit brighter. Um, we are talking about resumes. Uh, show this up. Uh, now it's time to reevaluate your resume. Let businesses help you with a new resume. Let us help you with a new resume. Okay, so that's just somebody look like they're helping somebody. And then um, let us help you with your resume today. Quick and easy. Text.
bottom of the Update your resume today. You could throw some random elements on here. Again, these are just throwing stuff on here that anything can like work with it. And trust me when I say it's this has nothing to do with what's free, what's not free. These are all from a design element. Uh, I'm just gonna put stuff on here. Put that over there. Maybe I'll put an element here. Can't really see that, but I can put it up here. Alright, let's rotate this. There. Um, maybe I took some lines, these whole lines. Alright. And I move it to the back. always undo you want to move this to the position or move it to the back I was behind that image I'm literally throwing elements on here and it just might work so that's a lot of what can happen update your resume today I'm keeping it simple straight to the point maybe want to make this a little bit bigger I'm keeping it straight to the point. I got my main color in the back, and bam, I'm done. I already know what you do because this is your business, your page. You sharing it. All I need is tell me what I, what you're telling me, and I see the email. Everything else, I'll contact you. So I'm gonna end this here because it's already too long. Um, but yeah.